The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you so much, DigiKey, every single week. Lady Ada, use her power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the parts that you need. Lamore, what are you looking for this week on digikey.com? Okay, I wanted everyone to know that this week that the IMX RT series chips are back in stock at DigiKey. Not every single one of them, but the ones that I'm looking for, the RT 1011D. Uh, but I also wanted to show all the different kinds of IMX RT chips um, so you can decide which ones are for you. And I also have a couple of samples here that I can show off so people can see like when I say BGA, how big is the BGA? When I say QFP, how big is the QFP? So let's go to uh, the computer. Don't forget, if you are using IMX, we have a little tutorial on how to um, install the Teeny UF2 bootloader, second stage bootloader um, that we, we publish on GitHub to your IMX board. Um, so the like I said, the chip that we're using, there's the IMX RT, 1011C and the 1011D. The 1011C runs at 400 megahertz. The 1011D runs at 500. Uh, I love more hertz, so I'm going with that. And then if you're like, what's the difference between these? Um, this link, which we'll post in the video, and also you can just Google for uh, IMX crossover MCUs, and it's on NXP's website. Um, you can see that they tell you the difference. It goes from most complex to least. And there's some good stuff. So let me tell you some of the differences here. Um, so the, like I said, we're using the 1010 series. So it's a little confusing because it's called the IMX 1010, but there is no actual IMX 1010. I don't believe that actually exists. There's the 1011. It's like, it's a, it's a you know what I mean? There's like a series called the 1010, but the actual component is called the 1011. Let me see if they have the part number here. I think. Hold on. Yeah. So these are um, the parametrics. Okay. So you, know, you can always go to the NXP site if you want like, more details because they'll have like the exact, you know, perfect setup. So the C series, uh, 400 megahertz. Whoa. Didn't want to buy that. Um, 400 megahertz. Both have 128K of SRAM. If you want more SRAM, I'll show you the next series. Uh, 2i squared C, 2SPI, 4UART. Um, unlike if you're used to some of the chips like the NRF52 or the ESP32 where you can kind of like move whatever peripheral around, that's not true. They're, the pins are set, not set, but there's, um, you can't put them on any IO. You have, there are like chunks that are like UART and I squared C and SPI. So you have to mux them out um that's not that's not unusual there's a lot of pins available but um you know they're not super fixed like the sam you know the um at mega 328 and they're not super flexible like the um um nrf 52. um both have uh 16-bit pwms both have adcs uh no dax um looks like the c series has a slightly wider temperature as well so slower but wider temperature range um both are lqfp 80. if you're like oh you know i like the 1010 but like i want more ram um the 1020 is kind of the next update that has um if you just want more pins you can go to the 1015 that goes from an 80 to uh, 100 LQFP. So you probably get like another 16 GPIO, still 128K RAM. The 1020 is the big leap um, to 256K RAM. And then the 1024, this is actually interesting. I think we covered this on IMPI when it came out. The 1024 is exactly the same as the 1020, except it has four megabytes of flash built in. So you don't need an external um, QSPY flash chip. I'll say though, like the pricing isn't like, like it's not good enough in my opinion. Like I would just take the 1020 because then you can stick whatever chip you want. But if you're like spacing constrained, because it is 144 LQFP, this is a big ass chip. Um, you can get, of course, the version that has the flash, you know, bonded inside. And then after the 1010, 1020 series, you actually get into like the pretty, like now, like suddenly it pops up to like very advanced peripherals. So, um, you're still going to be looking at, you know, 500, 600 megahertz, right? But 
the SRAM gets huge, 500 or, or even one megabyte of SRAM. Um, this one, the 1064 even has the that flash memory built in. Um, there's a GPU, the graph acceleration, and it has um, parallel display interface. So this is parallel TFT out. So that's, you know, a 24-bit TFT display with um, H-Sync and V-Sync. Of course, you could always run SPI displays, but if you want like a 7-inch, 10-inch display, 8-inch display, 10-inch display, basically everything um, before LVDS or MIPI, parallel is your, your way to go. Um, this still will, the 1040, 1050, and 1060 are still going to have um, the I2C SPI peripherals, but they're going to add CAN and built-in uh, Ethernet. Now, uh, for the Ethernet, you'll still need a PHY. Uh, it's just like the the low level that's not the low low level part of ethernet it's like the software uh side of the ethernet and you'll still need a tls stack and like lwip or whatever to, to run the ethernet so you know i know people who've used the teensy which is i think the 1050 and 1060 series um there's code there for uh, controlling the ethernet peripheral and then oh another thing that's interesting once you get to the 1050 1060 two usbs so you can have one host one peripheral and by the way these are all high speed usb the 1010 10 even has high speed usb so um very it's a um impressive because it's rare to see high speed usb in a microcontroller um usually it's full speed like the esp32 rp2040 samd series are all full speed not high speed so um let us show really, really quickly the chips on the overhead if it's possible just to go thank you so I, only, I don't have a ton I'll, I'll be honest with you but i have a couple 1010 so this is the 1011 so this is what the 80 lqfp looks like um you know it's designed for a two-layer board go to four layer of course uh for easier routing but you can absolutely make it work on a two-layer because i did it um four layer will just you know make it easier to route all the the pads and of course you can route them underneath this is um some 10 62s i've got i've got a couple uh so bgas um you know pretty i think these are 0.8 so they're not super fine pitch uh you'll need to fan them out but it's not too bad um the 1060 series and then let me see what else i've got here this is i've got some 1051s just like five Maybe this is the 0.8. Oh yeah, sorry. Totally different. Uh, so you can see the difference in the BGAs. So sorry, this is, I think this is the 0.8 um, pitch. Uh, check the data sheet though. Uh, this is like 0.5 or 0.4 maybe? No, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Um, so this one's gonna be a lot easier to route. Still four layer. This one, you might have to go with a, you know, a six layer board um, for that. So nice chips. Um, and then let me think what else i've got to show off i've got a that's pretty much it okay so you've got the qfp and then small bga and large bga uh so let's just go to digikey again and i'll show you um searching for them so this is the mimics rt series um and there's lots of evaluation boards don't forget you can also use a teensy to develop with these um, the, especially the 1050, 1060 for micro, they're under microcontrollers. Um, even though again, once you get the 1060, it's actually kind of good enough. You could run Linux on it in theory. So there's quite a few in stock of a few different, uh, versions, the 1052, the 10, uh, the 106 series, um, couple other like it looks like there's a, a few from a, d a different family like i said the 1011 is in stock lots of them 1051 um 1042 so 1062 is over here um so if you are interested in playing with these especially you know like i said the 1011 d 1011 c there's also an evaluation board uh rt 1011 let's see if they have an evaluation board i did purchase one but i don't know if it exists anymore hold on let me see what this is called i could also be incorrect 
Oh, and by the way, I think, wow, this one has a Freescale logo. I guess this used to be Freescale. Yeah, I have this a 1011D dev board, but it looks like it may not be available anymore. But this is what it looked like. It had, um, oh, sorry, can you go to the overhead? Uh, the Mimix uh, 1010 EVK. Oh, so you know what? Maybe I'll search for 1010 EVK. 1010 EVK. And let me see. Oh, yeah. Can you, sorry, can you go to the computer? So that's what it was under. Thank you. Uh, they do have them in stock. It's called the 1010 EVK, but again, comes with the 1011, um, less than 50 bucks. Comes with, you know, debug, port, crystal, like, um, looks like a uh, WM8960, so an I2S uh, codec for microphone speaker, and Arduino headers. So the one I recommend to, well, pick this one up um, if you're interested, but the one I'm using is the 1011 D. So this is my pick for the great search. And that's a great search. That's right. Where in the world is that part I need?